Okay, hi guys. Um, welcome to another uh, online session for uh, your GCSE Sociology. Um, the current point that we are up to um, uh, is that, as you might have realised, we've gone through all the theory and now we started looking at CAGE, which is obviously your class, your age, your gender, and your ethnicity. So far, we've done class, we've done age, and we've done gender. Now, logically, the next step would be to go to ethnicity, but it is quite a big topic. And it's not one that I think I want to do with you in this form. I want to do this uh, ethnicity as the last lesson um, in this section. So we're not going to do ethnicity yet, but um, you can add an extra D uh, and an extra S onto, uh, onto caged, um, which stand for, well, things that we'll discuss in a second. Now, hopefully, um, on the board you can see that there are five um, sporting um, individuals. And um, what I would like you to do is tell me and stop it for a second and think, can you name who these people are? If you get the guy in the bottom right hand corner, because he used to play for Aston Villa, um, you can have a house point because that's some pretty obscure knowledge. Um, and can you tell me what they all have in common? So pause it and have a think. Right, what you should have is, here we'll see how well you do in a pub quiz, Nicola Adams, boxer, Gareth Thomas, rugby player, Tom Daly, Olympic diver, Amelie Moresmo, former Wimbledon tennis champion, and Dare Hammer, Thomas Hitzelsberger, German, and former Aston Villa centre midfielder. And what do they all have in common? is they are all athletes that have come out as gay. Um, which means sexuality is one of the things that makes it onto our, uh, onto our kind of stratification list here and breaking down into these different groups. We are gonna look at sexuality today uh, and the D which is missing, um, if you turn to page 73, you will see is disability. So disability and sexuality will be the next thing that we are gonna be looking at. Now, I'm going to do one more of these, um, which is going to talk over your homework over Christmas. Um, and we might do, well, I might, sorry, I might do two of these. One more kind of little mini module, um, and then one thing that I'm going to ask you to do over Christmas. So um, there's still going to be a, a good proportion of work for you guys to try and get done. That way, when we come back, because we've done sexuality and disability today, the last one that we'll have standing is ethnicity. Um, and we can do that in the first part of the lesson, and then we can do revision of everything in the second part of the lesson and make sure that the stuff that you did online, ageism, disability, sexuality, and the other module, which is the final one, you are comfortable with before we move on. And then the next week you can, um, you can, you can do uh, a, an end of unit test. Um, it may be the case that we don't even bother with the end of unit test at that point um, and we can go on and do the mock exam as and when the mocks are supposed to be uh, around the 25th of January. There's always, because we're an express group, there's a lot of leeway. So we might, we could choose to do the mock the following week. It depends how much content we've got through with the next module. So uh, a little bit up in the air, but at least you roughly know what you're going to do. You've got, um, after today, you'll only have one more topic, which is poverty left to cover. We'll do an online version of poverty and that'll be done and it'll leave us with ethnicity to do um, in class. So that is how I'm planning it. The good news is um, for this topic is uh, disability and sexuality is very, very small, very tiny. And it's something that we can get through um, in not a lot of time. And it's all reasonably straightforward stuff. I also think it would be very unlikely to get asked a big 15 mark question where it focuses on disability and sexuality. Of course, when we looked at the way of constructing the 15 markers, remember it'll ask you whether or not, you know, is class the biggest factor that leads to discrimination? And once you've done your intro, you've then got to agree and then disagree and disagree and then conclude. So you could always use disability and sexuality as one of the things to disagree with, and you might suggest that 
Today, disability and sexuality are bigger um, forms of discrimination, but I think it's unlikely that the big essay will focus specifically on this, just because there's not loads and loads for you to say, uh, and there's not tons and tons of kind of sociological um, research into it. So, if you turn in your books to page 73, you will see um, on the bottom of the page, there are four terms, homosexual, heterosexual, bisexual, and transgender. All you have to do is match up those terms that you can see there, and hopefully that are just coming into focus now, maybe not, with those on the other side, okay? So draw a line between the ones that you think are the correct description. I'll give you time to do that now, so pause this clip, do that task first, and then we'll come back and get the results. Okay, so here's your mix and your match. So for homosexual, we are talking about a term to describe people who are attracted to the same sex. Remember, if you said, uh, you know, everybody is homogenous, homo would mean the same, okay? So attracted to the same sex, which of course is gonna mean that heterosexual is the term to describe people who are attracted to the opposite sex. Bisexual are attracted to both sexes. And then transgender is a term to describe people who think they were born um, in a different gender to the one that they were, uh, to their born sex, okay? Now, there are lots and lots of other potential labels to sexuality and pansexual and, and, and things like that. Now, rather than getting into a big debate about that, you've just got to know the basics, okay? And if you're happy and you're comfortable with these four, that's all that I think they can ask you for the exam. So, um, pretty straightforward, learn those terms, get to grips with them. Um, now, if you turn onto page 74, sexuality is a person's sexual orientation. Uh, in other words, which gender a person is attracted to. Um, now, what you can think here is over time, it does vary. Now, most people would say heterosexual is the norm. Um, and I suppose you would be right, because if there wasn't heterosexual reproduction, then we wouldn't live in a world where there's very many people. Um, however, you will see that over time, different types of sexual expression um, exist. So you might see in the times of ancient Greece where homosexuality was not really condemned, it was almost promoted, and you saw that there was whole armies of, of men that would be engaging in homosexual relationships together. Um, and, um, you know, in some senses, love between a man and a man was considered greater than love between a man and a woman. So it was fairly normal back in ancient times, in ancient Greece. But then again, you move to 150, 200 years ago in this country, um, and well, even earlier than that, and things are going to be very different. Now, what I would like you to do um, is have a look at this slide that's on the board now. Um, and this slide is going to focus on a fellow called Alan Turing. Now, if you've ever seen the film The Imitation Game, it is absolutely brilliant. It's well worth a watch. Now, Turing is a very famous, I suppose, mathematician, but he's a scientist. He's kind of like the first real computer scientist. He really develops the idea of what a computer is. Now, Turing famously, and he's most famous for breaking something called the Enigma Code, which is the code that Germany used to, um, to, to, to give like um, its army and its U-boats and its navy and its the Luftwaffe to give them information of what they want to do. Um, and this code, this Enigma code, was considered unbreakable. And the Allied forces couldn't break it, and consequently the Germans were able to move their forces around um, into areas that we didn't know and catch us by surprise. Now, Turing very famously breaks that code, and therefore, they estimate, brings the, the war to a close far earlier than it ever would have been normally. However, Alan Turing was gay, and that led, um, in the 1940s for him, um, and later on after the end of the war, to be in a very, very difficult situation. The bottom right of your screen, underneath his picture, you'll see a link. Can you click that link and watch the YouTube video, please? It's about five minutes and it will explain Alan Turing's life and unfortunately Alan Turing's demise. So I'll pause this here and watch that video. Hopefully, as that video's finished, um, 
you made some notes next to the uh, next to the picture of Alan Turing. We know, and it's worth writing this down certainly, that homosexuality was illegal in this country until 1967. It forced people like Alan Turing, who were gay, to keep their relationships private, or, as you've just seen in that video, run the risk of being um, victim of a criminal prosecution, which led to Paul Alan Turing um, being chemically castrated, um, and he chose that over jail, and can you imagine you know, somebody who should really be celebrated as a national hero, um, having to face, um, you know, that kind of response from a society that he's helped purely because of a, a predisposition, okay? Which is his sexuality, which is predisposed. Um, so, we understand that maybe things are very, very different in this country now, and thankfully things are very, very different in this country now, um, to how they would have been for gay men, gay women in the 1950s and the 1940s and earlier. Um, as you can still see though, in terms of making the legal age of consent the same for heterosexual people and homosexual people, there's still a difference. It only ever falls in line in 2001. Um, bringing it down to 16 for, um, for both sexualities. So again, there's always that little bit of prejudice here. Um, what we need to look at though, is the media's impact. Um, and this could be a question that you'll, that, you'll, that you'll get in the exam, which we'll look at, the, which we'll look at this. So um, for five minutes, pause it now and think about what the positive impacts of uh, the media has on sexuality, but what issues may remain as negatives. So consider stereotyping, casting, roles, moral panics, anything like that, and divide it in half. What are the pros, what are the cons to the immediate impact on sexuality? Pause it and go now. Okay, um, I'm, I'm hoping that for the pros, um, we start to look at um, greater awareness for these kind of issues, okay? Um, we didn't have, the first gay kiss was I think in, uh, in a soap opera uh, and it would have only been in the, in the, the late 80s, early 90s I think. So it, it, it wasn't something that made its way into kind of mainstream television for a while. So awareness is very, very important. Um, and, and I think the fact that there's, there's lots of stories that are, um, you know, stories that are based on it, um, Stories based on sexuality, ID, or, 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 e.g., the, uh, the imitation game about Alan Turing. I mean, that wouldn't have been that wouldn't have happened if you lived in a world where homosexuality, if you lived in a country where homosexuality was um, was illegal. Obviously, I said a world where homosexuality was illegal there because we still know in some cases around the world, in some places it, it is. But we've got a raised awareness. We've got stories based on sexuality. We've got. I think we live in a society that now there is less discrimination. You're not going to be targeted, hopefully. You're not going to get um, not get given a job on the basis of your sexual orientation, which I think is very, very important. Negatives, and you might have got some additional ones here, and that's fine. For the negatives, there's still, I think, a lot of stereotyping. Okay, in terms of maybe if you're a gay man, you're still expected in the media to be seen as quite feminine. Um, I remember once teaching a class going, well, they said, well, well, you can tell when somebody's gay, can't you? Because they're like a girl. And I was like, well, how would you know? They were like, well, you can tell, can't you? Because that's what they act like. I was like, if, how, how do you know that somebody who's not acting like that isn't gay? It's like, no. And maybe that's something that's been perpetuated by the media, this idea that, um, you know, in, in terms of the, the, the casting, the stereotyping's gotta be that gay men need to act a certain way women who might be lesbian need to look a certain way and behave a certain way. There is potentially that. Um, and the final one that I want to kind of talk about, because obviously we can't talk about all the things, is this, moral panics. Now we looked at moral panics in ageism, um, and lo and behold you found that in moral panics, moral panics is where the media make everybody scared about what's going on. In these moral panics which are created, you tend to find that the situation is blown all out of proportion and it terrifies the rest of the community. Now, when you get moral panics, according to Stan Cohen, you get folk devils. 
right? So, um, remember, in his case of the mods and the rockers, you know, they exaggerate the fight, and then the mods and the rockers became folk devils. This was interactionism, right? Because this was the theory that he's writing from, remember. It's all about the interactions between people, the media's interaction with the general public, the labels that you give people. So there's a very, obviously there's a very famous moral panic that Stan Cohen writes about, which is the mods and the rockers, but there have been moral panics that have been associated with sexuality. And there is the big one. In the 1980s, there was a moral panic about AIDS. Britain threatened by gay virus. AIDS is the wrath of God, says Vickers. Um, and what happened was, gay people, and in particular gay men, were branded and made turn into folk devils because people suggested that homosexuality was a reason for AIDS. Now, that's not the case. Um, and the situation is here, is that you ended up with um, what they used to call gay bashing. Um, you know, because of this, deviancy was made worse. The deviancy was amplified because people then started targeting um, gay men, started beating them up in the street. Uh, there was a string of murders against gay people in London as well. So you can still see the traditional moral panic, folk devils, deviancy gets amplified um, situation going on here in these in these in the moral panic on AIDS, and that's something that obviously the media can have a big negative effect on. Underneath your man, it says, new right sociologists believe that modern attitudes towards homosexuality uh, and transgender show that it's moved away from traditional values to the point where there's a decline in religion is a bad thing for the new right. For the new right, the traditional, something we call the nuclear family, which we'll discuss when we do families and households together, which is another topic, is the best to keep society healthy. That's with a man and a woman. So the new right are pretty anti-gay still. Um, but thing is we've got positives because the Equality Act 2010, which is the same act that we use if you're um, a woman, if you're an ethnic minority, if you're disabled, if you're a person with a different sexual orientation, you should not be discriminated against in terms of your opportunities and your life chances, which is very important. And therefore, any homophobia, any transphobia should not be legal. Turn yourselves onto page 75, ladies and gents, because on page 75, we are going to tackle disability now. All right? So, um, disability can be described as when a person is unable long term to do the something everyday tasks, as well as other people, uh, due to physical or mental impairment. People who are not disabled uh, should be referred to as non disabled people. Now, in terms of disability, there are two ways of looking at disability there's the social model and the medical model, and you need to know the two. The medical model sees disability as an illness, okay? It is the person who has the problem, whereas the social model sees disability as part of the person that society should look to accommodate. So the person's fine, it's just the barriers that society has created um, that are affecting the person. The bottom right, there's quite a heartwarming video which I think is definitely worth watching now, that explains the social model of disability so you can get to know the difference between the two. So I'm going to ask you to pause this again and play that video out for me. Hopefully now, uh, you know a little bit more about what we mean by the social model. Um, and on the board, you'll see that we've got six statements. Uh, these will relate to the social or the medical model and all I need you to do is figure out which statement belongs on which side. side. So it will balance three and three. Now remember the medical model is going to see disability as an illness and as a problem that the person faces. The social model is going to say that it should be society's responsibility to, um, to remove the barriers that it has. Right? It might not see um, you know, not being able to walk is an issue um, because if there's access ramps, if everything's at uh, the correct height for a person who's in a wheelchair to use it, then it's not going to be an issue. It's really society that's disabling the person as opposed to the person being disabled. 
So take a look at the one, two, three, four, five, six comments. Pause it now, see if you can tell me which one is social, which one is medical, and then we can write them up into the correct um, column, into the correct box. So if you look at the top one now, um, they feel disability makes up part of that person's identity and society should accommodate that disability. It is obviously going to go green because it is part of the social model of disability. You are, you know, you might not want to eradicate things like deafness or blindness or certain types of illnesses because that is what makes up that person. That is who that person's identity is. What you should work to do is accommodate these things to make life better for that person and to, to, to remove these potentially restrictive barriers. People who uh, have disabilities should be helped as they're going to struggle to live without support. Bang, that is going to be medical model because it's viewing disability as a negative thing. Feel those with disability will have significantly worse life chances and will find it hard. Bang, that goes to medical model as well because it's saying that the disability is the issue. Seeing disability is just another kind of difference like ethnicity or gender is the social model. It's just something else um, that makes up the identity of the person, their sense of self. People will have worse life chances, but not because of the disability, but because society makes it hard for them to get on is obviously going to be social, which means that the final one, seeing disability as an illness or something that is very bad, which a person is facing, goes red. It is the last one on the medical model. Can you pause this now and fill those in for me in your columns? Okay, so the section underneath is just asking for a few answers on where we might see people with disability facing prejudice and discrimination in the workplace, um, in school because they're not getting the correct support, uh, in the healthcare system because there's not people uh, on hand who know how to deal with their illnesses, um, in the job market because you're less likely to maybe employ a disabled person because you've not got the infrastructure in place to support them. So you go, well, well no, I won't bother. That shouldn't happen because of the Equality Act 2010, but just like the way um, you might see discrimination in terms of job applications if you're an ethnic minority, just the same way some women will feel that there's a, um, might be a glass ceiling that they can't get the top jobs. It shouldn't happen, but it may very well still do. Here's a time to get to grips with an exam practice question, um, and it's going to be the last thing that I'm going to ask you to do. Uh, this exam practice question is four marks. Now remember, because it's four marks and it's asking for two things, it's going to be four sentences and you can break it down into one point with expansion, another point with an expansion. So explain two ways in which the media might represent disabled people in a negative way. And what I want you to do here is consider Maybe the roles that are played by disabled people. Consider the money spent on disabled broadcasting. If you watch the Olympics versus the Paralympics, is there a significant difference in the quality of broadcasting and the money that they spend? Do you get all the big celebrity kind of athletes um, on that show? Or is it just uh, they spend all the money to get, I don't know, Michael Johnson and Denise Lewis and all the famous athletes who do the commentary? Do they do it for the regular Olympics, but they kind of, don't, don't invest the money in the Paralympics or in disabled sport. How many disabled people are there in lead characters? And actually, if you look back at cinema history, if you think of people who played disabled characters, so Daniel Day-Lewis won an Oscar for a film called My Left Foot, where he played someone with um, cerebral palsy. Um, Tom Hanks, Forrest Gump, you know, Tom, you know, Forrest Gump's got a learning dif difficulty. Uh, Tom Hanks plays him, so they're non-disabled people playing disabled people. Is that a problem? And then again, go back to the stereotypes that we might see in the media. Do we view disabled people as needy? Are they people who are just shown to be struggling and you know living a hard life and need lots and lots of babying and support um, rather than potentially shown in a positive and endearing way? I think things are changing, but again, in the exam, we've not talked about this, but you're going to have to think carefully, um, use your own knowledge, because we can't go through at the pace every single answer that could possibly come up. So think about those four, and can you answer that question for me? And remember, full sentences. One way the media might resent pink people in a negative way is blah, 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 blah. An example of this could be blah, 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 blah. Full stop, next two.
All right, that's what I want you to do. So pause it now, get the final finger. Happy days, right, brilliant. Um, the last thing to do is something that we're just gonna um, very, very quickly talk about. I think the most, um, I think it's still unlikely, but I still, I still think this could be a question that comes up in your exam. If they wanna ask you something on disability and sexuality, I think it will be disability that they focus on. Uh, and it might be a nine mark question such as this. Assess the position of disabled people in the uh, UK, uh, assess the view, assess if the position, I'll learn to read in a second. Assess if the position of disabled people in the UK has changed significantly over the last 50 years. Now this is gonna be a nine marker, so you'd have your intro in terms of what do we mean by disabled. You can tell me what we mean by dis disabled, give me a brief definition, and you know there's gonna be a conclusion which is gonna be your view to round up the essay. And then you've got paragraph one and paragraph two. Paragraph one, you've got to agree. Paragraph um, two, you've got to disagree. Now, what I would say is this is going to be an exercise between the social model, which would say, yeah, things have changed. They've got better for disabled people. They're being treated differently. We've got um, ramps. Society is making um, steps to treat it as just another part of your identity. Uh, and removing some of the barriers that might stop achievement and the, uh, you know improving life chances, or then you've got no, and you can still use this idea of the medical model. Now, within that, you could put media impact on both. So you could say how, yes, there is now the Paralympics on television that is watched by lots and lots of people. And you have famous Paralympians like Johnny Peacock, you know, um, I think he was, almost one sports personality of the year. So um, you do have those things. But in this paragraph, you could say, well, hang on a minute, maybe the media don't have enough disabled people taking lead roles in films, or they don't um, have enough programs that focus on disability, and there's not kind of the, the widespread viewing um, that there is for um, non-disabled people's programs. Now, I'm not gonna ask you to complete that, because when I post out the, um, the next thing for you to look at, um, you've got a 15 marker that you're going to do anyway, um, which was the 15 marker that um, we looked at at the end of your ageism um, PowerPoint. So I'm going to ask you to do that one over the summer. So you don't need to do that, but it's certainly worth considering um, and trying to remember that, well, in the exam, potentially they could ask you that question. So rather than doing it, I'm going to ask you to plan it. And on page 77, there is space for you to put in a plan for that nine marker. It only needs to be rough, just so you've got it in your memory bank should you need it. Um, obviously, it needs to be a little bit more than this. This is the bare bones, because you want to say what you're going to put for the media. So you're just going to want to make a few notes on what we mean by a medical model and some examples of that, and what we mean by a social model and some examples of that. But just plan that one out, because your homework over Christmas is going to be the 15 marker that we did at the end of the ageism. Um, lesson which is online okay uh, thanks guys there should be one more thing that uh, I send out during the holidays and when we come back you'll still need to bring your stratification booklets um, because we're going to do ethnicity which I know is missed out and um, we're going to do that one together all right, all right. thanks very much guys um, enjoy your holiday